Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Mark Borstein. I'm the CTO of Tremel Security and co-author of Kubernetes and Enterprise Guide, second edition. We are going to go ahead and integrate Okta into our Kubernetes cluster using Open Unison with the new OUCTL command. This is going to automate most of the deployment for us, uh, and we're going to be able to get it done super quick, which is great. Um, so let's go ahead and start off. We've updated our documentation to uh, streamline things a bit. So looking at our prerequisites, we have uh, Nginx running. So we have an ingress controller running. Now we get to the site specific configurations. This is the hardest part, getting this part right. Um, so actually first we're gonna deploy the dashboard. So let's go ahead and do that nice and quick. That's up and running. Now we get to the site specific configuration. So let's get the default values and paste it in here. And this is where people tend to get hung up the most is setting up the host. You have to have uh, two or three unique host names, depending on if you're going to use impersonation or directly integrate with your cluster via OpenID Connect. We're going to use impersonation because it works whether you're on-prem or uh, working with a managed cluster like EKS, Sivo, GKE, etc. cetera. Uh, so I've got my host name set up. Now, I don't have my own DNS server, so I'm using nip.io, great utility for testing. And uh, I'm also going to update my cluster name. This is really important because especially when you get into multi-cluster, you don't want your cluster configurations to overlap. So I'm going to call that the control plane. I'm also going to enable impersonation. So this way, this would work whether it's in running kubeadm on my home lab or it's running up on EKS. So we're going to leave... The rest of this is the same. Uh, we can actually remove this trusted cert. We don't have any trusted certs in this deployment. All right, so now we gotta configure our authentication. We're going to use Okta, so that means OpenID Connect, although I guess you could use SAML if you really wanted to. And let's go ahead and go to Okta. So here's our dashboard. I'm gonna go to Applications. Create a new application, OpenID Connect, web application. And we're going to call it my, cluster, my Kubernetes cluster. Do my cluster now. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and set up our redirect. Redirect for Open Unison is always going to be your oops, Open Unison host slash auth slash OIDC every time. Easy to remember. Don't worry, it's in the docs. And let's allow everyone to access. Great. And let's go straight down to sign on. Let's edit our token. We want to make sure that all our groups get sent. Uh, you know, if you have a naming scheme, this is a great, great place to use that so that only the name, the groups associated with Kubernetes get sent down to your cluster. So that's all set up. Uh, let's go ahead and configure Open Unison. So we need the client ID. So let's come down here to OIDC. We'll set that. And we need the issuer. That goes here, so let's go ahead and make sure we paste that in there. Great. And then uh, that's it as far as um, our values.yaml is concerned. We want to leave user in ID token to false. That's because uh, Okta, like most identity providers, will not include group information in the ID token. Uh, so we have to call the user info endpoint. So uh, that automates that process. And we're going to leave all the claims the same. Uh, so that's it. The last thing we need to do is let's get our client secret. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new client secret. So I'm putting it in a file. I'm not using the echo command. Uh, a lot of times you'll see someone say, you know, do echo and secrets, and you see there, uh, that's in my history folder, right? Like that, I do that, and then I do uh, history into grep, you know, echo, or actually, I don't even think I want to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to hit the up button, and there it is. So 
uh, that that static secret is now in my history fold in my history file. You don't want to do that. Um, so just go ahead and edit the file directly. Uh, so with that, we're ready to deploy. Oops. So let's come back to our documentation and come to deploy the portal. So we're going to need to get the uh, version of OU control for our operating system. I'm running on Mac, so I'm going to go ahead and download that. And let's just move that to OUCTL and make it executable. Let's also get the latest Helm charts. And so now we run the uh, OUCTL command. And you can see there, uh, the two main options commands are going to be install off portal, which is what we're going to run, and install satellite. So that's being able to set up multi-cluster. Uh, we'll tackle that one in another video. Uh, so we're going to run install off portal. And most of these options for customization, if we want to use a different location for charts, let's say uh, we're pulling it down from someplace else, or we've got a, a cache somewhere, we've customized them. Uh, but honestly, the only uh, flag that we care about is dash S secret. That is uh, where we stored our, um, uh, our Okta secret, our client secret. And then uh, our path to our values.yaml that we just built. Documents, documents, projects, open unison, con demo control plane. So let's go ahead and run this. And uh, we are now deploying the operator chart. Once the operator chart is deployed, which is what we have here, we're deploying the orchestra chart, which deploys the actual container uh, and most of the guts of the system. And then finally, once that's done, it'll deploy the login portal chart, which has all of the individual configurations for Open Unison. Um, once that's done, we'll have an authentication portal ready to go. Uh, this command is safe to rerun. So if we make a configuration change, we need to debug something, we can rerun this command. It'll just upgrade the charts instead of redeploy them. Uh, if you want to change the configuration, but you don't have the original secret, that's okay. Just don't pass in a secret. It won't update it. Uh, so it's a really versatile tool. Uh, we're going to be including it in some uh, jobs for automation. Um, so uh, it, it's a really helpful way to be able to uh, quickly integrate authentication into your clusters. So we're going to let this run for a minute and uh, we'll be back once it's done. All right, so we are all deployed. Let's go ahead and uh, copy our URL. And let's fire up a new incognito window. Yeah, open use and generated all these certificates for us because uh, we didn't bother with setting up like cert manager or anything like that. Uh, but certainly you could use that as well. And in fact, if you're going to use this for production, I would absolutely recommend going that route. All right. So we're now signed in. Uh, this funky uh, username, that's uh, the unique ID, the login ID that Okta sends over. But the important thing is we have all our roles. So now if we go to the dashboard... Uh, we're logged into the dashboard. That's our user, but we don't have access to anything. Our back, right? So let's go ahead and uh, set up a role here, make sure that this works. And uh, our back binding. So when we do our, our back, always do it with groups. You don't want to do it with users. Uh, really difficult to manage with that. So let's go ahead and do create F. And we have a group called uh, Kate's admins and so if we come here we'll see that I am a user of the Kate's admins group from Okta. Let's go ahead and give this a quick refresh and you'll see there are no more errors and we come over to uh, cluster and let's take a look at nodes and it's a single node system so not a lot going on but uh, it's all working. 
So let's come back here and grab a token. So I'm going to run our kube control. Get temp uh, R. Okay, get nodes. Not connected, so do a control V. Now, uh, I said don't put in any uh, uh, secret information in your history file like five minutes ago, right? And now I'm putting secret information in my history file. This is all short-lived. These tokens are all going to go away. So if somebody gets their hands on it you know, tomorrow, it doesn't matter. That information's all dead. It's not useful anymore. Um, so now let's see. Can I get access to my nodes? There it is. Okay, get pods and open unison. Okay, exec, TI, let's uh, you know, go to open unison orchestra and open unison. So just like any other Kubernetes integration, that's it, we're good. So now, pods and open unison, oops. Of course, if I knew how to type, this would be a lot easier. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and log out. Now, uh, I'm already logged out, so it's gonna ask me to try and re-authenticate. I can't get, oh, I guess I can get back into the uh, dashboard. Oh, you know why? Because uh, I'm logged in to my remote identity provider. That's why I got right back in. But you can see I logged out here and I can't get into uh, Kube Control anymore. So signing out, actually signs out and ends my kube control session. So yeah, we have deployed the whole thing just in a few minutes and now we are able to start using our cluster with our identity information from Okta. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and add additional clusters without having to do additional integrations into Okta. Thanks everybody, have a great day.